Hey everybody, welcome to the That Junge Podcast. My name is Josh. It is Thursday, Thirsty Thursdays, which doesn't really mean anything. I just say it because it rhymes the thirst and the th. The th. Anyway, today's just going to be a kind of a normal video. We're going to dive into the Instagrammer that talks about her her kids almost being abducted. We're going to dive into the stories that are being uncovered because of that. We're going to talk about what this means for family vloggers that her and people like Kendall are are talking about predators and it's happening a lot. So we're going to dive into that a little bit of today. We're going to get into the douche mom of the day, kind of the original stuff that we've been doing. Um, this is not a snarky one, everybody. So this is going to be a real one you're going to want to watch. It's not going to be me being a dick box or anything like that, but... Before we get started, as per usual, okay, I've got a user that I found already. What's her name? Shyla Foster Swanson. Now, the reason I've chosen Shyla Foster Swanson, cool name, cool hair, is because I see you in all of the comment sections standing up for me. Badass baller, just like Rockasaurus Rex, just over there supporting me, and I appreciate the support. And so what I think I should do for people who support me is at least I'm gonna try to get a ball in for you. And if I get a ball in, you get to choose a hoodie, all right? I haven't, I haven't got a ball in since Tom was here. So let's let's see if I can get one in. Oh my God, I'm trying again. If it doesn't hit the rim, I'm trying again, okay? That's just fair, it has to hit the rim. Oh my God, I'm so white. I'm gonna kill this thing. How do I get worse? How is it possible I'm getting worse? Yes! <laughs> Damn, I have to give you a hoodie. This thing's like 50 bucks. Okay, whatever. Reach out to me. You finally win. Guys, see, I wasn't always just trying. Sheila, Shyla, I think it's Shyla Foster Swanson. Reach out to me and uh, claim your prize. I'll probably end up making it myself because it's cheaper for me to make it. I've got all my setup over here. And I'm going to do that before Christmas. I'm going to clean the studio. I'm going to 3D scan it, send it to you guys. But until then, oh, so much to talk about. Let's get to it. Awesome. Anyway, guys, welcome to the channel today. Obviously, you're on this channel because I can't upload to the Dad Challenge podcast yet. I have fought the strikes. Currently, we are in the position that we have fought. I've sent back the rebuttal from my lawyer. Um, so now it's in the hands of bits of Brittany or <laughs> Brianna K. Brianna K now has the responsibility to either sue me, right? So YouTube, just how this works is that they, you, uh, Brianna K strikes me, okay? And then I have to uh, rebut it and say, no, I am fair use. Here's my, here's the fair use policy. Here's the legalese. Here's my lawyer's name, all that stuff. And then she has 10 business days in the US to say, okay, I'm going to sue Josh for this. And if they can't prove that they're going to sue me, the videos get reinstated, the strikes are removed. So I'm waiting for the lawyer letter. Let's see if we get it here in Canada. I'm not sure it's going to matter, but I'm waiting for it and I'll read it for you. So that's where we are right now. Once those strikes are kind of gone or she takes me to court and sues me or whatever the case may be, um, I guess we're just kind of in limbo. But I think by Saturday, I'm allowed to start uploading. And I want to wait to drop that um, Dr. Kirk video on Saturday because it's so good. I got shivers when I was doing the interview because Dr. Kirk just drops bombs that you don't even like, you didn't even realize. And you're like, oh my God. And so if you don't know who Dr. Kirk is, he, he, he owns a, a podcast called Psychology in Seattle. It's a YouTube channel. Very successful, very smart, very handsome young man. I think he's older than me, but he's a great guy. And I love talking to him because he just opens my eyes. And it's, it's less about all the snark and all that stuff. And it's more about just really understanding. And we talk about consent. And we talk about this whole family vlogging world that he's actually not that aware of. And he's like, and I laid out some stuff for him. And even he was like, uh. So you guys are going to love that interview. Make sure you come by on Saturday or Sunday. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll let you know. Don't forget tomorrow. Obviously, we're doing some, some housekeeping here. Tomorrow is the Secret Santa, which we're doing on... Twitch. So I'm going to start porting some stuff over to Twitch. I'm going to start playing video games. People have been asking me, Josh, can you play some video games and talk about this shit? Of course I can. Because I love video games. Although I'm not good at video games. Like I, especially, like I love video games. But when it comes to like the, okay, I think one of my, is Uncharted. Uncharted is one of my favorites. And when you get into the puzzles, I am like dumb as a bag of rocks when it comes to puzzles. Like I'm terrible at like 
figuring out shit. Like, I'm so bad at it. So I'm always looking up the hacks. So maybe if you guys can help me on that channel. But I think I'm going to play Call of Duty, not online, just like the campaigns. I like playing campaigns because I love the stories of these. And I know there's a bunch of new games that are coming out. I'm going to play those and talk to you guys. If you're going to want to come hang out with me and play video games, yeah. I'm going to do it. So tomorrow we officially launch Twitch. Um, that Challenge Podcast Twitch. I don't know. I'll find the link for you. And those of you who are a part of the Secret Santa, I'm going to have five of you on at a time. And we're going un to unwrap our presents. Introduce yourself. Unwrap your present. Say thanks to whoever gave you a present. And then you're going to bring five more people on. I can only have six people on at a time on the StreamYard link. So that being said, make sure you guys are around. I think tomorrow around, I want to say like 7 p.m., 6 or 7 p.m. EST, like New York time. So um, that's Eastern Standard Time. So wherever you are, make sure you can be on. If you can't be on, that sucks. It's okay. You don't have to come on. But if you already opened your present, you're kind of a dink. But that's okay. I forgive you. Some people can't make it to the, to the Secret Santa. But come on over. I'm going to bust out the guitar. Tom's going to be here maybe. We're going to eat some junk food. We're going to play guitar. We're going to sing Christmas carols. We're going to have a gay old time. It's going to be so much fun. And we're going to open presents, which is the most important part of Christmas. Just kidding. It's Jesus. So, we're going to do that. I got my Christmas sweater ready. Be ready. Tomorrow's going to be fun. All this drama and all this shit that's been going down. Can we just forget about it tomorrow and just have some fun? But that's after, you know, full lid Friday because I'm going to be uncovering a bunch of other stuff tomorrow. Anyway, let's get into, uh, I don't know, Douche Mom of the Week. <laughs> Today's douche mom of the week goes out to, it's another beach body. A beach body, dub, the beach body MLM, garbage. Tomorrow I'm talking about this, recapping. TikTok is removing all MLM things off of their platform. Love it. I cannot wait to dissect all the hate videos to TikTok from these MLM dirtbags. I'm so excited. Anyway, she's of course an MLM mommy influencer, 124,000 followers. It's all about her kids and her fitness. Mamahood. She's a mama. She's a hashtag mom boss, obviously. But obviously, she's just selling MLM bullshit to her to her things. She's the CEO of the brand. Wait, CEO of the brand, the B, the B, the B brand. I'm dumb. She's the CEO. Seventy four thousand followers, and it's a clothing company, and it's not. It's not nice. Not good stuff. Anyway, so this girl, what's her name again? Ashley Smith Fitness. The reason why she's douche bomb of the week is because, well, actually, there's two douches of the week this week. Because I was going to do one last week and I forgot to do it. Um, it's going to be douche dad of the week is Cola Brandt and douche mom of the week. So I'm going to do both because everybody keeps coming at me for just coming after moms. So it's douche mom of the week, then it's douche dad of the week. So douche mom of the week today is Ashley M Fitness and her shit's the same as everybody else's. It's, here's the thing about all this stuff. It's like there's a formula and it's like you just get like sick of it. You're like, can you not? Like it all looks identical and it's like, meh. Ugh, right, but she's the douche mom of the week not because she sells an um, not because she sells MLMs, but that makes her a douche. She's douche mom of the week because she posted a photo of all these little kids here. So cute, my kid is, and then posted all these kids without blanking out their faces to her 124,000 followers on Instagram. Look, a lot of those parents in this place might not have wanted you to post this to your enormous audience. Hey, maybe take that in consideration next time, Ashley Dumb Fitness, because you are douche mom of the week. For doing something douchey. Next, douche mom of the douche dad of the week is Cola Brandt, just because for doing a video like this, where he faked dropping a baby, which I get, you know, people are like laughing, it's a joke, it's a, nah, don't joke about that stuff. Again, when someone who, who exploits their daughter, right, for so much money on an Instagram with 5.1 million subscribers with the active analytics of men watching it and knows that, nah, you're going to be douched out of the week probably a lot. But, you know, not every week, but you're going to be douched out of the week a lot. So, Cole Brandt, you get the inaugural douched out of the week because you are. Congratulations. I'll send you a, uh, a poster if you want. You can put it on your wall and add that to your little... YouTube plaques and stuff. Douche, you know, it's an honor. You should be honored. Anyway, let's move on to today's topic, which is going to be this Instagram influencer. So today's video is about Kate Sorensen, okay? So she, we're going to go through her video real quickly here. Then we're going to go through the BuzzFeed article about did she fake this thing or not? We're going to go through it. I don't know if I'm going to go through the whole thing. I'm just going to cover some parts of this thing, but we're going to, we're going to uncover this thing a little bit more. We're going to talk about it and from probably a different angle of what you guys think I'm going to talk about this from, I'm not going to throw a shade or anything like that. Feeling of just needing to get this information out there. So here we go. Um, 
Uh. Let me stop you there for a second. Sorry. <laughs> you need to get this information out there, right? Why? Why do we need to know what happened? Because you are bringing awareness to the fact that this happens? Now, I'm going to be cynical here for a little bit, okay? I mean, right off the top, an influencer does this because this is going to be a pretty big hit of content. Like, let's be truthful here. I'm not saying what happened, it didn't happen, and I guess we'll go through the article and find out later, but what I'm saying here is that these people, when something bad happens to them, their initial reaction is to turn the camera on. And she even admits here in a second that, oh, I didn't want to, but I did. And she went viral because of it. Let's not pretend, okay? So this is gonna be a huge bump for her. She's what's called sad fishing here, as far as I'm concerned. But if it's real, it's real, and it's still scary. It's still sad fishing. On Monday of this week, my children were the targets of attempted kidnap. Um, which is such a weird thing to even vocalize, um, but it happened, um, and I want to share that story with you in an effort to raise awareness as to what signs to- There it is. An effort to, to raise awareness to signs of creepy people. Now, not saying the message is bad, but this is what Kendall did too. Did you, again, when we get to the end of it, did you stop, did they- I mean, it's, I'm not saying it didn't happen. What I'm saying is that, like, they, when they say the word, att I stopped at attempted kidnapping. Kendall R. did this too on her channel. She said, stop the kidnapping. Unless you literally physically stopped the person from taking your child. I don't think that you can claim that. Now, I understand why you're saying that, and I'm not saying that you're not justified in saying that. I'm just saying, you gotta be careful with that language because then BuzzFeed articles come out about you. So let's dig a little deeper. For, um, and to just encourage parents to be more aware of their surroundings and what Okay, so you're bringing awareness to people to be to be real parents. Thanks family vlogger is going on around them um, I think right now we are so distracted by um, Everything that's going on in the world that we are kind of um, have our guards up so much about um, masks and wanting to keep our children safe that way that we're forgetting the most important way to keep them safe and that is with us um, and to not have them taken. Look, I don't want to, I know this is going to be sound bad, but no, sorry. You just said that we're so concerned with masks that we're not watching our kids and they're being taken. I don't, don't do not agree with that. What I'm going to say here probably will get me a little bit of like, uh, maybe not, it's a little bit chachi, but Maybe if these family vloggers would stop focusing on the content that they're going to do every single day of the week and having a camera and about themselves, focusing on themselves. I know that sounds bad, but these, these influencers, right, are the nar most narcissistic type of people in the world and they're about themselves. Like, you can't put yourself out there in bikinis and all this stuff and all on the line and look at my life and entire life without being severely narcissistic, okay? And so it's very self-centric, their lives. Their kids are props for money. Right. They are they might. And I absolutely do believe that they love their children, that they are probably good moms and all that stuff. But in the end, you, it's hard to separate when you're making money off your children. Right. And so at the same what she said, there was not. I don't agree with that. I think normal good parents keep an eye on their children when you're at a store. I'm not, this awareness lesson we're getting. Are, are, are you telling us something we don't know as parents? Watch your kids. So I'm going to share a story. Um... In an effort. Okay, and she drags this shit out for 15 minutes, so I'm definitely going to be scrubbing through. Okay, I'm sorry, I will be scrubbing through. It's so long, and she talks so slow, and she repeats herself 44 times. So I'm sorry, and I don't like this hat. To raise that awareness, but it's I'm not ready. I this is hard for me. I'm not. She's saying she's not ready. Ready to share this story, but I I know it's important. But and I would rather be uncomfortable um, and awkward th and get the message out sooner than wait until I feel composed. Uh it's the real and raw. I need to make sure it says real and raw. You're ready. You are ready every day to make content. This is content for you. Now, I'm not saying it didn't happen. I actually do believe what she is saying here, but we have to look at this through the eye of a family influencer who needs content. And I know we have to look at it through a cynical eye, but Maybe we can learn some lessons too here from her, her, her scary story, but don't say, I'm not ready to tell you the story. So here's the story. We see through that. That's the problem. We see through that, right? Because I don't know if I'll ever be composed talking about this. Um, so here we go. On Monday, like I said, my children were the um, targets of attempted kids. She says Monday. This is the day of, I think, or the day right after, I guess. She's just trying to put it on the week she was in. We went to the store quickly, grab our stuff and go. I only have two. Hours. So she's alluding to the fact that her kids weren't wearing masks. So, and you know, I'm not gonna, whatever. <laughs> 
kids don't like my kids wear masks everywhere that doesn't bother them but some kids don't want to wear masks i'm not going to shade you for not having your kid but she put a cover over the thing cool i wouldn't be complaining but she's alluding to the fact that people are probably look giving her the side eye so if i needed to grab um and then i did a target pickup so that was the only time we were getting out of the car um, so we get to Michael's, I park as far away as possible, um, in an effort to not inconvenience others with our big stroller. That's what I, that was always my go-to. Whenever I brought the double stroller, I'd park far away so that people wouldn't, um, be frustrated with me taking forever getting the stroller in and out. I mean, it's nice, I'm, I'm Canadian, <laughs> but no, just... Okay, why, why all this? Why given this? Why do we care about this stuff? Get to the story. Um, that is the first thing that from this day forward I will be doing differently. Oh, I see what you're saying. My bad. So she's saying she parked far away. She shouldn't have because she's going to park close now because she doesn't care about, you know, it's it's better to stay close and to uh, get close so you can have less distance. Okay, I understand that. Um, if I ever choose to bring my kids out again. So she's just saying right here she's not going to bring her kids out again. Um, I noticed a gentleman. He is parked in the spot, not in front of me, but to the left, two spots. Um, he gets out of his car and starts walking towards me. And I, my thought is, oh, he's just gonna offer to help me because they probably look like I need help or something. Um, he walks towards me, looks for a while, and then just goes, turns around and gets back in his car. And I was like, oh, that was weird. Maybe he thought. I agree, that's weird. If somebody did that to me, I'd be like, sup chief, need something? Keep stepping, bruh. Piss off. He recognized me or something, I don't know. Here's it. Listen to this. This is why I'm talking about this today, not because I'm trying to debunk her story, because I think her story is true. He recognized her, she thinks. And she probably gets recognized, right? She is a pretty heavily influencer influencer on Instagram. And if, again, this is why this is scary, because you are an influencer, you're a public eye, and if people are targeting you, predators will be targeting your kids. This is why I'm talking about this, because we don't know that, and she just said that, maybe he recognized me. Um... So I get the kids in the stroller and we go into the store and they come in and they walk kind of close behind me. Um, I definitely felt the heebie-jeebies. I didn't feel good, but I thought I was judging a book by its cover. Um, they were not like kind, that sounds bad, but they weren't, um, they weren't clean cut individuals. Just say the thing. They didn't look like the best characters. And so you can say the thing. But she doesn't want to be ratioed for that because that's what people will latch on to. But hey, trust your gut. As a, as a mom, you got kids, doesn't matter. Trust your gut. Um, and so I attributed my discomfort to just, again, judging a book by its cover. That is the second thing that I will um, change from this experience forward. I go directly to the back of the store because one of those items is spray paint. And I notice they're hanging close by and I'm like, maybe they need spray paint too. I don't know. Um, but then I hear them talking. Um, and they are describing in detail the um, characteristics of my children. They're saying blonde hair, blue eyes. Yeah, right there is big red flag for me. This is where I started believing her, like being like, okay, lady, get a manager, get someone to help you, peace out ASAP. I talked to Tom and he said that his wife probably would have done the same thing that this this woman did here. And obviously I, I have more of a street awareness because I kind of grew up in a... I'm not saying I grew up in the streets, but I definitely grew up very in poverty and I was like living my life outside <laughs> and I've had to deal with a lot of crazy people in my life, obviously through my, my, my story itself. And so she probably doesn't realize about this stuff, but initially my reaction here is like, yeah, get lost. You hear that all instantly. You get your phone out and you call your husband or whatever it is. You get a manager and you say, I don't feel safe right now. Can you walk me in a car? That's instantly here. All you do. Um, maybe one years old, trying to guess ages. Um, and I just kind of ignore it. I'm like, maybe they're gonna make a fuss because neither of my children were wearing masks. Maybe that's the fuss. I continue to get in line and um, I notice that they get in line right behind me. Um, and this was a very long line. Um, it was like wrapped down the store. There were only two clerks checking people out. Um, yeah, Michaels, more clerks. Don't be jerks. I hate when you walk in the store and they're aware of the lineup. And there's two clerks looking in there and they're going even slow. They don't give a shit. That is one of my biggest pet peeves. Read the room, managers. Get some more people checking people out. Side note, sorry. So I had quite a bit of time in line with them. Um, and it wasn't until we got a little bit closer to the cash register that they finally picked something up. 
Um, but as we were in line, I there was a really nice lady in front of me and we were speaking about the kids and just life, I don't know, life right now. And I was doing that thing where you kind of nod and smile and act like you're listening, but really your ears are elsewhere. Um, and I was... That's basically me talking to my kids <laughs> every day. <laughs> Sorry. Listening to what they were... Dad, look what I can do! Yeah, cool! I'm totally looking! <laughs> and they're like... Yeah, that was terrible. Go, you know what? If you got something cool to show me, you can come back. But that was not good. Saying behind me, um, and this is when I knew, without a shadow of a doubt, that they were talking about my children um, for purposes that were not appropriate um, or not um, that didn't sit right. They were talking about um, like their eyes, their face, and everything. Um, and then the thing that disturbed me the most um, was that the um, gentleman said, sorry, this is really hard to, the gentleman said um, to whomever he was talking to on the phone or whatever, um, sorry, the boy will be, the boy will be easier because he's not wearing a mask so the mom not, must not really care about him that much. Okay. Like, and she's like, this This is what she hears, and this, she's probably frightened out of her mind at this point. Again, everybody, take this as a lesson. Maybe that's why maybe she should have done this video. Holy shit. If that happens to you, oh my god. You tap the lady you're talking to in front. Hey, I don't feel safe right now. These people behind me are talking about my children in inappropriate ways. Can you call the police? Right there, you call the police. Right at this moment, you call the police, even if it's indiscretionary. Hi, police. I'm at my uncle's right now. And you tell the police because... Why would you wait till after when you've already heard this thing? The boy will be easier. You call the police. Maybe they'll catch these bastards. Now, I know that sounds like I'm like shaming her, but I know she's panicking the moment. And so this is just kind of me being like, I can't believe you did this. When you hear that, man, if, if it sounds like she's low level, really ashamed that she didn't do anything about this. I can't tell you why I didn't turn around and say something right then. Why I didn't even have the courage to shoot a mean look. I, I, I was... No, that's too little anyway. Again, you hear that instantly, you call the police. Sorry, call the police. You've got a phone right in your hand. Call the police. And if it ends up being that they were just joking around or whatever, like, they could apologize after. Safety of your child first. Not, like, being rude. Sorry. Paralyzed. Paralyzed with fear. Um... And I, I almost just discredited what was happening. Like I couldn't wrap my mind around the fact that this was actually happening. Um, and so I just kind of. I gotta, I gotta talk about this too a little bit. Like why would these people who were there talking about this thing, were they just joking with her because they knew who she was and they didn't like family influence? I don't know. But at the same time, like why would someone verbally outwardly say the thing that they're going to do? Like, to, and they know you're hearing it and then are, are they just having fun by trying to scare you? I don't know. But that seems to me like anybody who's going to do this for real isn't going to project that talking about it to scare you unless they're just trying to scare you for fun. Again, I don't know because that to me is like, how dumb are you? Maybe it's good that they're dumb. But like to me, that's there's a bit of a flag there, bit of a flag to maybe they were just being a bunch of jack wagon douchebags um, by trying to scare her because they knew who she was. Maybe I don't know. Or they were throwing shade at her because her kids weren't wearing a mask because some people do that and we've seen multiple videos online about people mask shaming people who are not wearing masks right and causing fights and everything else and maybe they were just trying to make her uncomfortable because they said well she's not following the rules or whatever i don't know but there's so much here why would you why would you project the thing you're about to do if you're trying to be successful at it weird to me this is a weird story okay that was the short one this is the long one. Oh my god hey as we get closer to the to the front of the line, the lady in front of me says, you know what, you have the two kids, you go ahead. Mind you, the kids weren't throwing a fit at all. She really wasn't doing it to like, she was just being kind. And she just said, you know, I wish people would do more kind things and um, gave me some- I've got to say this. This is the, the content creator's version of a story. They need to, like, this whole story could have been summed up in three minutes or less. Why so much detail into the story? What is it about this crazy amount of detail that it's like seemingly means nothing? So check out quickly two items. I walk out, call David, my husband, um, and I say to him, if yeah, call the police. 
we had a code word. We talked about having a code word before. If we had a code word, I'd be using that right now. He's like, what the heck? That's weird. I'm just saying. If we had a code word, I'd be using that. Why don't you just say there's a, uh, there's people here. Like, uh, 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 Are you talking about? And I said, I think someone was following me in the store. That's all you had to say. Talking about the kids. He's like, what? What are you talking about? And as I'm saying this, I feel someone walking right behind me. And I turn around, and sure enough, they're right behind me. They did not buy anything at the store. They must have put down whatever they had picked up to pretend to buy um, and followed me out. Um, they notice me, notice them, so they go like they're going to their car. Um, and I start walking more quickly. I look up at my car, and there is a white van parked exactly right next to my car. Um, so to just play out where... Yeah, and so this is where I started being like, this girl... Be scared. She's I I honestly believe she's telling the truth. I just feel like holy crap. The details, the stuff that she's going into, is because she's trying to relive it or tell a story. I don't know. Right here, that white van shit. You turn back around, everybody. Lesson from the Dad John's podcast, and you go back into the store and call the police. I'm sorry. You do not keep approaching this van. I don't. I don't get it. Um, it makes me upset because that's to me. That's a lot of common sense. It's just common sense. And I get like, I don't want to shade people. Like I know that when fear hits people, people do irrational things. So maybe that's the case here. I know when my wife comes up against confrontation and things like that, she often can't say things to, and isn't quick on her feet when it comes to like coming up with solutions where I am like solutions instantly. So I, I know I'm projecting my own, what I would do on this. And I can't say that she didn't try that stuff, but man, that white van creeps me the F out. Right. I'm scared for her right now. I'm like, I'm screaming at her telling the story, turn around, go back to the store, call the police, do not go towards the van. What does she do? So I was parked in the spot closest to our store, if that makes sense. Like um, in the parking oh lot God. that's still close to Come our on. store that we were going to, that's the parking lot I was in. And I was in the second to last parking spot. So there was only one spot in between myself and the area where other traffic can go through. Again, all you had to say right at this moment was, I was parked in the second to last spot. They were parked in the last spot. Save yourself two minutes. So that van was positioned perfectly right next to my car, um, blocked by my own car in a way that if people were around, they wouldn't be able to see what was going on. Um, so I see that van and I my stomach just sinks and I don't know what to do. I'm too afraid to change the direction I'm going. I, I can't explain to you Why? what I was thinking. There, there was no logic. It was very just, I was terrified and I didn't know um, what I- Okay, the initial response to um, psychological danger is fight or flight, okay? There's something amiss here. It's flight at this point. It's not continue into the trap. I don't get it. A, a person's instinct, a human being's instinct is to fight or flight. And you continued on scared. There's got to be an, an instinct that takes over at some point here. I don't know. Something weird, man. I don't know why you keep approaching the stupid van. I, I, I'm creeped out here. Why would you do that? Doing. So I walk straight to my car. Had the stroller right next to me and I didn't lock it. And so he just slides barely, barely out of reach. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. You are in a temporarily... You are, you are in, a, in a situation where you are paralyzed with fear, yet you are approaching your vehicle, you're talking on the phone with your husband, and you're putting your kids in the vehicle, and the stroller rolls away? The stroller rolls away. I'm sorry, this is like the horror movie where you're like, everything could go wrong at once, and maybe it did, but this is too much at this point, where you're like, you are paralyzed with fear, okay? You're walking into a trap. Your fight or flight stimulants are not working for you, apparently, and you're stepping up and then the stroller rolls away. I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm having, I don't know. I, I, now at this point, the flags is just like waving in the wind here. Why? If you're so scared, the first initial thing is to put that damn stroller where it's not going to go anywhere. Your kids are both within your reach to get out and like, I don't know, man, I can't, it's bug, it's bugging me. As that's happening, I see the couple walking towards my car um, and they walk around, not the full perimeter, but half of the car. They go back and forth around half of my car. Um, and they're doing that thing again where they're not looking at me. So I can't make eye contact with them. That's scary AF. I know she's telling the truth because the details she's giving of these creepy people are like, you, can, you don't, can't make that up. That shit is scary. And again, 
walking into this trap to me was like the dumbest thing you could have done. And I'm not trying to shade you. I'm just saying, oh my God, all the things wrong with this. I'm looking right at them, um, but they won't look at me. And while they're doing that, they're holding hands. I'm gonna show you if I can, kind of how they were. So they were holding hands kind of like this, like they had their hands like this. They weren't actually holding hands. He had something in his hand. Oh my God. And she just had her hand like this. Um, and they're walking towards my car, towards my stroller, and I'm just saying to Dave, this is happening right now. What do I do? This is happening right now. Do I leave? What do I do? You've le- yes. I'm too afraid to say something to them. I couldn't. I couldn't do it. I don't know why. Um, Holy heebie-jeebies. Never bother me. And then as I go to, I'm, I decide I'm just going to throw Finley and the stroller. I don't even care about the stroller. I'm just going to throw Finley in the trunk. I'm going to jump in the trunk. We're going to close this car. We're getting out of here. Um, all the while, I'm so focused on this couple. I'm not paying attention to the van. It's almost like that's become irrelevant to me because that was kind of speculation in the first place. Um, but I open the trunk. As I'm opening the trunk, you know, it goes boop, boop, boop. Um, Finley is next to me, but there's a hair of a second where I can't see all of the stroller. You know what I mean? Um, and in that hair of a second, they first they had taken two steps forward towards the stroller, then two steps back, then two steps forward, then two steps back. It made no sense. It was obvious what they were doing. Um, in that last time, he reaches for the stroller and um, by the absolute grace of God, um, Someone is parked just a few spots away, just close enough to see what's going on, but not close enough for the people that are involved in. There's so much incredible detail here that are like, this is close enough to see, but not close enough to this. Like it's 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 not. I'm not saying she's covering it up, but it sounds like she's making a story here to fit a selective narrative on the other side. Like who takes two steps forward, two steps back, two steps like a crazy person. Like I at this point, man, I'm I'm gonna break your neck if you. I'm gonna like I don't care as a human being. I'm like. You better step away. Like, I don't get why you don't say one word. Like, you don't, like, look at them and say, scream, fight or flight, people. Fight or flight. There's a, there's a human reaction that needs to happen here. I take my child um, to notice, and it's an old man. He must have been, like, 80-plus years old. Looks at me, and he has this mask on, and his eyes get so big, um, kind of asking, like, do you need help? And I just yell excuse me can you please help me and this Thank little God. man just comes running over and the couple whatever they drop what i don't they didn't drop anything they just don't stop reaching for the stroller run get in their car drive off and in that moment i feel a rush behind me and i turn around and um there is a man right behind me um and he kind of plays it off like oh do you need help with something uh and I just like look at him. I'm just paralyzed. Like I can't talk. I'm just. Um, uh, he gets in the van, shuts the door, and just drives off quickly. Um, and- didn't get a license plate. Did he take a picture? I don't get it. It's too much. It's. It, I know this all probably happened relatively quickly, but there's just so much here. And I guess it's always easy to say what you would have done afterwards, God, when you've re- re- when you've regrouped and everything else. And I get it, but man, so much here. And I drive off and I file a police report. Um, And that is the extent of that. Um, I am well aware of how different that could have played out. And that's what scares me the most is that despite the fact that I was in tune enough to pay attention to those signs, I still, there are so many ways that I dropped the ball and um, was not as prepared as I could have been for that. Motherhood essentials. It's like, this is like, what she's doing is she's bringing awareness to what? Bring awareness to not be paralyzed in the eyes of, I, like, again, if this is, a, if, if she's right in what she's saying, and I want to believe her for sure and give her the benefit of the doubt, I mean, there's no, there's no lesson you can have here. If that's your physical response to fear, there's not, there, that, when that happens again, you're going to do the same thing. If your fight or flight response isn't working, it's not, you don't you can't just buy, you know, it's not something you can do to get it working. Something else is wrong there. I'm not sure what you would... I guess, no, maybe in, the, in your mind you can say, okay, if this ever happens again, here's the, the basic game plan I'm going to put in place. Maybe. Um, and so I 
my purpose in sharing this is to simply raise awareness um, and to encourage you to not only be aware of what's going on around you, because I was aware, um, but I did not know how to act. I did I did not practice how to act. I, I maybe have thought in my head before, oh, that's what I would do if I was in that situation. But um, if you don't really have a definite plan of what you'll do, you're going to freeze up. Uh, She's got a good point here, and she's and she did, and she's and she's low level shaming herself, and I'm not I'm not trying again. This is not shaming her because I do believe her story. I do believe her response to this fear too as well. I mean, I'm just projecting what I would have done because it's I'm in I'm in I'm like I'm engrossed in the story, and I'm like no, it's like watching a horror movie. You're like no, don't go up the stairs, you idiot. And for me, it's like <sighs> she's she's bringing awareness to say these things to have these plans in place, and I get it. Um, but damn it if it's not a 20 minute content video. My first piece of advice is to, to be aware, be aware of what's going on around. This is why family vloggers to me look. I get what she's trying to do here and thanks. But good parents are aware. Good parents are aware, most parents are aware. I mean, this is not a lesson you have to tell people. Sorry. Um, and to not be uh, ashamed or embarrassed, to not put your fear of inconveniencing others first. Um, that's a good point. I agree with her on this. So maybe just if you're going to take anything from this video, that's a really, really great point. Safety of your family and yourself over doesn't matter what. I mean, you don't have to get if it's all internalized too, it doesn't really matter. But again, safety over everything. I don't really care what your mind goes to. It's safety over everything for sure. She's got a good point here. If you don't act on that feeling, the worst thing that will happen is that your kids could be taken from really good point. Um, so take that risk. Don't, don't. Yep. Sorry. There's people every time around me. I wanted to have some nice <laughs> bullet point things to share and, um, ways that you can look out and I think I'll get to that point but for right now I can it's taking everything in me just to share the story um so here it is for you I'm nervous to share this I'm not gonna lie because Why? I do feel a lot of shame oh. um, and guilt around the fact that I wasn't able to act in the way that I know that I should have my hope is that this inspires a parent who is in a situation where they do need to take the like right now to be aware of what's going on um I, it's hard for me to square this because i don't I'm obviously I'm, making, I'm not making fun of, i'm not throwing shade at her but like this is like parenting 101 don't let your kids get abducted i don't get like no this was i cannot square that here this is content and this definitely boosted her profile so it's really hard to put the two in, and she's like i'm scared to put this out there because i'm going to be ashamed you didn't have to put this out there at all just had to make the police report go get them to pull the cameras from from michael's do everything you needed to do you did not have to share this at all and so saying this is like well i'm sharing this because i cannot being a cynical guy who's against this type of lifestyle that they lead i cannot i cannot separate them that this was content for you and it is a little bit of sad fishing, but I do not blame her for her reaction. I don't, I don't want to shame her for re her reaction. Obviously I had a visceral reaction myself to that where I'm like, Oh my God, do the thing. And I'm like, I'm not mad at her for that. I just, I feel like this is sometimes what people go through with humans. This is how they deal with trauma and stress and all that stuff. And we've been, you know, such a weird place we live in, especially if you're famous, right? If you're an influencer and people are targeting you, that's where this gets dangerous. And so maybe the, another reason she shouldn't have shared that is because now you're going to give these, if these people were targeting you because who you were, that's what they wanted. They wanted that. A lot of these people want that fame from this. That is creepy and scary. And I don't know. I'm having a hard time with them because I don't, I'm not shaming her at all. I do believe her story completely, but did she need to share the world? Did she need to share it? Because when you share something this personal with a large giant audience, you have to take that into consideration. I don't want to uh, impose a fear mentality. We have enough fear of living in this world right now. I don't want to add to that, but I just want to encourage you to be aware. Um, Side note too here, in this world of masking where we all live, even if they have footage of this whole thing in the store and they do, mask. That is not an anti-masking statement. I'm just saying that in this world of being targeted, like these people sometimes are, be safer. Like, she's got a great point here. Be extra diligent and safe. Because when people can stay anonymous, 
They can do a lot of creepy things and be out in the open about those creepy things. She has a good point here. It's just, it just goes on and on. All right, so then we're going to go into this. I have not read this, this article. A mom, a mom influencer who claimed on Instagram this week that her children were nearly kidnapped at a local craft store has received an outpouring of support as well as skepticism on social media after videos went viral. Now her local police department in northern now her local police department in northern California city of Petaluma is speaking out about the viral video saying that the story Katie Sorensen told her Instagram followers included information that they were not made aware of in her initial report and they are currently and they currently don't have enough information to bring a case. Sorensen who runs an Instagram account called The Motherhood Essentials catapulted herself into the social media spotlight this week with two Instagram videos she posted on her page. At the time she had a small following of about 6000 people according to Social Blade. Oh She's gone private because this is happening. She had, so based on, she had, she had 6,000 people according to Social Blade. Now she has 81,000 people. Again, you can't have one with, it's just, mm, right? Right? Why would you go private if your story is correct? This is where it gets a little crazy. Okay. Sorensen told BuzzFeed News in a brief phone call that she wanted to share experience because she wanted parents to feel empowered to trust their gut instinct. I posted it simply to raise awareness, she said. Sorensen has since made two videos and her account private, but KTVU reported Henry K. Lee shared a part of it on Twitter. The Petaluma Police Department said in the statement that Sorensen reported the incident on December 7th alleging she was followed inside the store by a man and a woman who had made comments concerning the appearance of her children. The couple was said to have followed the woman to her car where the couple lingered near the stroller as the woman placed her children inside the vehicle. Sorensen's videos soon went viral on Instagram, being viewed according to KTV more than 2 million times. Her Instagram account has now more than 80,000 followers, although she's gone private. The story not only gained traction among worried moms online, but it hit home in Petaluma, the home of Polly Class, a 12-year-old girl who was abducted from her home and murdered in 1993. Mark Class, Polly's father, who has since become a world-renowned sh child safety advocate, even commented on the case for KTV Nightly News on Monday night. As the story picked up steam, Petaluma police released more details in the case, according to investigators. They were unable to find the couple after responding to the scene, and Sorensen had told them she did not want anyone to get arrested. Why? Uh, why not? At the time this incident was initially reported, there was insufficient evidence to establish that a crime had occurred. On Monday, investigators said they learned of a social media post made their reporting party, in which she recounted and elaborated upon the aforementioned incident. According to the police, Sorensen included information that had not been pre initially presented to the Petaluma Police Department. The police department released a photo of the couple that Sorensen identified as the suspects. Police say they have followed up on leads. However, the department added inconsistencies between the two accounts of the incident need to be resolved before criminal charges are considered. <sighs> However, Petaluma police sergeant said the department statement should be interpreted as casting doubt should not be interpreted as in casting doubt in Sorensen's story. He said the department released a statement because it was it wants the public to come forward if someone has any new information as police clear up the inconsistency bef before bringing the case. And it looks like here. They are buying something, and she said that they didn't. Now, it's true that she went out, and she assumed that they didn't purchase the thing. There's a stroller there. That's weird. I think this picture is showing something. Either she's behind the couple, and that stroller is her, or we don't know. That's I'm not sure what they're trying to show here. This is this is a nuanced case. He declined to elaborate on those inconsistencies, saying he doesn't want to try the case in the court of public opinion. Okay, well... In reality, a stranger kidnapping a child from public place is extraordinarily rare, accounting for fewer than 10% of child trafficking cases, the group said. She has been completely overwhelmed by the positive and negative reactions to her video. She said she wants people criticizing her actions to acknowledge that faced with the traumatic experience, it is impossible to function at full capacity. She also denied having any further ulterior motives for the video and added that she never expected it to go viral. I had no intentions or underlying motives for sharing my story other than to encourage fellow parents to always remain vigilant. I hope my family and our local law enforcement will be giving the respect. Okay. So I want to go back to this whole thing. I rally a stranger kidnapping a child from public extraordinarily rare. Yes. And so that to me shows that red flag of like influencers are targets, can be targets, not always. Now, she only had 6,000 followers. That's not a lot, but you never know, right? You never know that they're looking at you through certain things. Going private to me is a little bit, uh, she's getting a lot of negative things. People, this is not over. Okay. What happens after this thing kind of goes down and silent is going to be the, um, is going to be is going to be the most telling thing. If she gets signed by We Agency and becomes a family vlogger and boosts off this platform because of that, there's going to be a lot of people that have a lot of things to say about that. If she goes silent and stays silent and just kind of gets off social media for like a year and just comes back at as normal, even though she you know whatever, as comes back as normal, then I won't say a word, but. Going from this point forward, there's just a lot there. 
I don't want to tell my story, but here's my story. Now people, the police are saying, nope. What she said in that story, she did not tell us. Why would you leave things out to the police? Some of the most important details, clearly you knew the details because you literally unloaded the details in an immeasurable detail on your Instagram stories. So you knew every moment of the thing. Why would you leave that out to the police? There's just a lot of questions. I believe you, Katie Sorensen. I absolutely believe that you were in fear for this. I'm not saying that you were telling a lie. Um, absolutely believe that you were paralyzed with fear. You know, that's just how some people react to things. But man, putting this out there, really, 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 especially as an influencer who does this, it's going to be very telling what you do going forward from here. That's all I'm going to say. At this point, I do believe you. I do believe everything you said there. And I believe that you did have the right intentions to say, hey, be careful. And I'm telling people too, influencers, be effing careful because you might be being targeted. And if these types of cases are so rare and it's happening to influencers a lot, like our life and you and people who are influencers, that says something. That says something to me that if it's so rare, but it's happening to such public figures, it gets to be like, okay, let's start talking about this. All right. So that's my take on this. Let me know what you think below. Uh, I could be wrong about a few things. Again, I'm, I didn't, there's no shame there. I'm not making fun of her. I absolutely, completely believe her. And I believe that her story, um, to say maybe she was genuine in her thing that says, look, don't, I think she had a couple of great points. You know, don't worry about shaming somebody else by saying, hey, stay away from me. I don't get away, you know, and parking closer and doing the things and trusting your gut. Absolutely. She had those little things. And I think she's so smart for saying those things. Some of the other things like watch your kids. That seemed like it was really, really, really drawn out to me, too, for whatever reason. I don't know. But getting that many views, amassing that much, it's going to be very, very interesting to see what happens after this. And in her link tree, does she have a YouTube channel? Oh, she sells oils. No. She's got, like, so many links to, like, her blog. She's just like the rest of them. She's got more than one oil website. CBD oils. She's just, she's the standard influencer. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. When you look at all this, the MLMs, the thing, it's just, it's too hard not to say she did this for the attention she was going to get. Anyway, I do believe her story. I do believe that what she said did happen. I, though I am now calling into question why she recalled the story in such crazy amount of detail on her Instagram, but then did not tell the police the whole story. I guess we're going to find out going forward. I'm going to be following her pretty closely to find out. So, um, you know, Ray, show me below if I'm being wrong or rude or whatever. I don't think so. I think I was pretty fair in this one. I do believe her. Katie, I believe you. So, but damn, get away from those MLMs. They're nothing but toxic grossness. Thank you for watching this channel, Ray. Please like me on Instagram because that is very important. Um, I think I'm going to be able to post on my main channel soon, but make sure you also head over to Rumble and, uh, Subscribe to the Dad Jones Podcast. The affiliate link is below. That helps me grow that platform. And uh, I've got a big interview coming out with Dr. Kirk Honda on Saturday or Sunday about uh, kids and consent. And don't forget tomorrow, Secret Santa and the big stuff going on on that and some music and some fun. And let's get away from the drama and enjoy Christmas together. I think I'm going to be going over to Twitch a lot. I'm very excited about that platform and uh, play some video games and watch some prime television with you guys. Watch some Christmas movies. Maybe we'll watch a Hallmark movie together or something and make fun of it. How's that? Does that sound like fun? Um... But yeah, I really appreciate you guys and what you do here. And I hope that this has been not a super negative experience. But at the same time, I think there's some great stuff that she had to say there. There's a lot of lessons to be learned. Influencers, if you're listening to the story, family vloggers, do what she says. You know, and I do what I said yesterday. Eliminate your P.O. boxes or find a way to get packages without you actually physically going to get them. Because you are going to be a target. As this topic becomes more of a big thing... Predators are going to do whatever they can to maybe capitalize on the, the thing that they've already been trying to do. So just be really, really diligent family vloggers out there. If you're not going to take your kids off, whatever, but please be extra diligent. If you have a, an a available to conceal and carry to take, to take lessons in like, in like these types of situations, what's this called crisis management lessons or whatever to be, to be prepared, take the time, get the coaching you need to get carry mace on your keychain at all times don't carry a whistle whatever it is make sure you have a plan in your mind set in place rehearsed do all that stuff like she said rehearse a crisis situation like this because you are going to be targeted because you're famous that's why famous people don't go out into the real world okay you don't see like j-lo and her kids out shopping at target okay and, and they have bodyguards and so these people who are on, on youtube have millions of subscribers and followers and all that stuff they're quite famous and they don't go out with protection so please if you're going to continue to keep your shit on your channel and your kids and all that stuff and not care, just at least 
figure out how you can protect and add more layers of protection to your to your to your sphere okay that's all i'm gonna say you are incredible who watched the show thank you for being here with me today sorry this was so long um it was a very interesting topic though tomorrow we're gonna do full and friday got a lot to talk about we're gonna talk about jacob from little people we're gonna talk about tiktok removing all the mlms talking about um more clickbait reveals and some fun stuff and then what's going on in the world of like carl lentz and the church and stuff that's happening and then again that afternoon we're going right into secret santa i love you guys i hope that you were having an incredible holiday hope that all of your christmas shopping is finished your kids are going to be home soon so sorry you know just throw an ipad throw some waffles at them and do what you got to do take care of yourself okay but make sure you protect your kids love your children love the people around you and be really nice to people over the christmas holiday except for those who exploit their children they don't deserve to have people be nice to them okay all right and just want to give a shout out to deaf noodles dude dropped a freaking hilarious video on micah and i'm going to actually do my recap on micah for the end of the year he gave me inspiration so thanks deaf noodles for the inspiration i'm going to be recovering the best moments of micah 2020 so get ready for it it's gonna be fun have yourself an incredible day you're amazing I'm not afraid to